So I've got a couple of people with me today. Uh, had a class, had a virtual class. Been doing a bunch of those lately, and uh, this was a couple of folks that took the big dreaded national USPAP course. You know, the 15-hour one. Uh, it's kind of tough. You're going to have an exam and all that good stuff. And so these are not appraisers. They are not trainee appraisers. I'm going to call them a trainee appraiser wannabes because <laughs> that's, I mean, that's kind of what they are. And uh, so I've invited a couple of those folks to stick around and have a conversation. So come right back and join the conversation. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying busy. And most importantly, I hope you and your family are still safe during this trying time that we've had. And hopefully we're, uh, we're about out of it. Man, I, I'm hoping we're about out of it. My uh, cruise line stocks are going up, thank goodness. <laughs> so, so hopefully that means uh, people can start traveling again very, very soon and get on those cruises by the way. Carnival, I bought a lot of carnival stuff. Carnival, use that one. But anyway, I am uh, I'm happy and excited. I got a couple of guests with me today. So without any further delay, I have uh, want to be number one, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Robert Taylor. Welcome, Robert. Glad you're joining us. Glad to be here. And uh, then the want to be number two is say your name because I'm going to butcher it. Go, Nadia Workman. Nadia, see Nadia Workman. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for hanging out. So, uh, Nadia, why don't you tell my listeners where you are on this journey? I mean, you're not a trainee yet. So, what classes have you taken and what do you still have yet to take in order to get your trainee license? I've taken principles and um, now East Pat 15, and I still have to do procedures and supervisory um, okay so, so you still have base still got basic appraisal uh, procedures mm -hmm. and you've got the trainee supervisor class right gotcha all right mr robert what about you where are you at in this journey yeah i've uh, actually just finished uh, my last class that i need to have before becoming a trainee awesome and, uh, we got to take a test, but... Um. <laughs> got to take a test, and then uh, then that's it, right? Submit your application, and uh, and you'll be official. Well, that's exciting. Congratulations. Let me ask you, uh, both of you have supervisors. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Nodding your head doesn't work for audio purposes. <laughs> so you got to talk. You got to speak up a little bit. Uh, they both said yes, by the way. And uh, so that's one of the biggest challenges, uh, someone wanting to get into this profession. You know, it's, it's really the biggest hurdle to getting in. Uh, so tell us about that, Robert. Were you able to secure a supervisor pretty easily or how, how did you go about doing that? Yeah, um, it actually kind of fell in my lap. Um, you know, I've, uh, one of my good friends, I guess I could say my best friend, uh, reached out to me and, and said that uh, he's been looking for um, a someone that can help him in the appraisal business and uh, he's been really contemplating it and he's he you know thought of me immediately and I was kind of doing a different career path but I think I've kind of told him that I was ready for a change uh, just because you know I'm now becoming a family man and I have uh a three-year-old, almost three-year-old, and then I have a baby on the way. So I, I decided that uh, what I was doing was good, but I wanted something better, something a little more flexible, you know. Um, so that's that's why I kind of ultimately went this route. I, I just think that it's a good fit for me. Very cool, very cool. And I got to meet your almost three-year-old. Uh, yeah. He's quite charming young fella, and congratulations uh, on the new one on the way. Uh, Ms. Nadia, tell me uh, how difficult or if it was difficult in finding and securing your supervisor. Um, honestly, it was not that difficult. Um, it was communication and relationships that have gotten me my mentorship. Um, okay. I was going to go to law school 
and mm. thought hard and long about the commitment and sacrifices, especially for young families. And um, I met with a family friend a lot and she was telling me how I might want to look into becoming an appraiser, that um, there's a need for it. It's lucrative and it's flexible. And she did it for her daughter, trained her, um, and she's doing pretty well with it. So kind of fell in my lap as well. Very good. You both are extremely fortunate then if that happened, because there's a lot of my listeners right now that probably hate you both. <laughs> they, they don't even know you. But uh, I mean, honestly, there, there are folks out there that have been looking uh, I, I've talked to people on a regular basis that, hey, I, I, I looked high and low for two years and I couldn't find anybody. I gave up, you know. Uh, I had a gentleman in my class who said he called 83 appraisers before he found one willing to talk to him about possibly taking him on as a trainee. So uh, recognize the fact that you guys are extremely lucky to have kind of both really fallen into that and, uh, and had that opportunity, you know, so easily so let's talk about your journey thus far yeah. I, I may just bring you guys back on a regular basis and just see how things are going if that's cool with you we'll just kind of check in with the two of you uh, along your process and progress uh robert how, how have you know this was your last class so tell me about the other classes were they were they hard were they were they easy what 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 would your take on uh, on the classes that you've navigated successfully so far well you know kind of talking about um things kind of falling in your lap i think um you know with the pandemic going on this has kind of been uh, um the zoom classes that we've been taking has actually been beneficial for me because i've been able to study more um you know mm. Nadia and I were kind of talking earlier about, you know, maybe the challenges being in an in-class, you know, maybe, mm -hmm. oh, you got to test immediately afterwards. So that to us is kind of scary, but again, we haven't tested, so it may, it may not be that, you know, that bad, but I think uh, the class, the format and everything's great. Um, you know, the practice uh, quizzes um, are very beneficial, um, straightforward. Uh, the instructors have been wonderful and very, um, you know, helpful if we have a question, uh, getting us the answer to that question and just making sure we're prepared. Great, great. Now, Leo, what about you? I mean, this is, uh, this was a tough class today, right? I mean, there was nothing really easy about, <laughs> about USPAP. Um, what about your other class? Was that a little easier or still, still kind of a tough class? Um. Honestly, I would say that my principal's class was a little bit harder. And okay. because I was exposed to use PAP in principles. So I had, I already did my feet in the water. That was right. my first class. No prior experience with appraise, you know, appraising and all that. I haven't started my mentorship. So there's a lot to take in for a four day class at one time so yeah it was a little intimidating but right. each class feeds off of each other i'm learning so the tests are going to feed off of each other as well so like he said the virtual class has been very beneficial for me to be able to study and combine my learnings and then take an accumulative test like i'm going to take yeah. on Friday. Now, one of the things that, that, you know, I do in all my classes, I, I give some test taking tips and we did that today too. Uh, <laughs> and yesterday you shared something with me um, in one of my, in one of my classes and I just randomly will quiz folks. I'll, you know, one, one thing I like to do is, is not really teach from an aspect of memorizing because the problem with memorizing is you tend to forget. And then Nadia is going to <laughs> demonstrate that in a moment for you, but, but, but I don't really like to teach from a perspective of having a good general understanding of it. When we talk about what creates value, yeah, you can memorize dust or stud for the test on Friday, but then likely later in your career, or maybe even before you sit for the national exam, you're going to forget it. But if you have a good general understanding of the, what, what are the economic influences that create value, scarcity, utility, desire, purchasing power, we use those as a practicing appraiser virtually every day. 
It's just we tend to forget that. So uh, we, we try and teach from a perspective of understanding these things, having a great understanding as opposed to memorizing. There are, however, some things you got to memorize, like how many square feet are an acre? And I, asked that, I asked that yesterday, and uh, not even the way she answered kind of surprised me. She said 43560, and it took her about 43. 43. 4350, 4350, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, remembering this i'm really bad with math so i said it as my code that night yeah stop right there so to set the, <laughs> to set this up uh in a in a recent class because you said Catherine's the one and Catherine, if you're listening hello this is your fault uh <laughs> Catherine was in one of my recent classes and and one of the things that i encourage appraisers to do is hey forty-three thousand five hundred sixty. you're just gonna have to memorize that that's how many square feet are in an acre of land, right? 43,960. You're going to just have to memorize that. Here's a good way to help you remember. Make it the password on your cell phone because you're going to want to get in your cell phone, right? And you're going to remember how to get in your cell phone. Well, so I thought. So Catherine gave you an idea. Go ahead and finish your story. So then I studied all night. The next day, took the kids to school. It was early. We Memphis has a boiling water advisory. So the stores are crazy right now. Okay. I'm in the store and I'm unlocking my phone and I can't remember the code. I can't. <laughs> and that's what you set the code for how many square feet are in an acre, right? That's what you did. Yes. And I kept putting 42 instead. <laughs> then I kept trying to break a code. Then my phone ended up being disabled for 15 minutes. Then an hour. <laughs> so you oh, because you didn't know how many square feet were in the lake. <laughs> so did you remember? I mean, what happened? How did you finally get in your phone? I ended up getting so red in the face because I had a grocery list. <laughs> Kids, I could not turn around. I live 45 minutes away, so I asked a random stranger. And I said, I'm so sorry to bother you, but can you please look up how many square feet are in an acre? And they looked at me so confused and said, please, it's just my passcode. I'm having the hardest time. <laughs> They're laughing and I'm explaining to them what I'm doing. They're, they're, they're thinking this is the best pickup line. Ever. <laughs> this is the best pickup line I've ever heard. Sir, excuse me, I'm locked out of my phone. Uh-huh. And it's how many square feet are in an acre? Can you what? Yeah. You really just went up to somebody and said, can you Google how many square feet are in an acre? Is that what you really did? Yes. <laughs> and uh, they laughed. They had a good old, uh, made their day during this <laughs> pandemic we're having. So if that's, I, and I'll never forget. I'll never forget that number. It's going to stay my passcode for a very, very long time. So there you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you might forget it once, <laughs> but it's very unlikely that you'll ever forget it again. Is that a fair statement? Very fair. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're a trainee here, you're a trainee wannabe, uh, go ahead and make your password 43,560, or as you said, 43560, right? I think that's what you called it. Um, and you, if you forget it, um, you, that only happened to you once. And uh, Catherine, thank you for that recommendation to her. Uh, it's actually my recommendation. I gave that to Catherine and she's spreading the word, I guess. But uh, how funny is that? So, so Robert, to switch gears just a little bit, you've actually been out in the field, right? You've been going out with your supervisor, doing some things, kind of seeing what he's doing. Uh, what are some of the challenges or, or what are some of the the fun or exciting things you've done uh, so far as a almost trainee appraiser? Yeah, um, I've actually started this journey uh, January 4th uh, okay. with my supervisor training. And uh, I've been able to go with him, um, ride with him um, to a lot of properties. And uh, he kind of 
has been working through it with me and explaining things. And um, he has had, had me help him measure and draw and, and everything. And, and uh, you know, one of the challenges that I've have, I guess, come across is um, trying to draw the rooms proportionate. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll get to the other side of the house and it just doesn't kind of line up and then he'll take it from me and draw it out in like five seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, that's so you guys problem. must be using, you're, you're doing this pen and paper. Is that what you're, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so one of the things I'm going to do is pull you off to the side. And, and if I have to come down there and twist Adam's arm, I'm going to, <laughs> uh, we need to get you on some mobile devices. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then you don't have to worry about, because listen, I sketched those out by hand for a long, long time. And boy, mine looked like your son drew it, right? <laughs> and your son probably could draw it better than I. Uh, nobody could make that chicken scratch out. Uh, but the way to do it is to get a mobile device, an iPad, and use that technology that's readily available. Because think about it. When you're going out right now and you're sketching all that out, what do you do? When you get back to the office, you got to sketch it out in your sketching program. So you're right. doing double the work. Adam, listen to me. So if you're writing out carpet, drywall, double hung windows, crown molding, when you get back to your office, what are you doing again? You're typing carpet, drywall, double hung windows, crown molding. You're duplicating your tasks. So if you just do it once, it'll make you more productive, save you work, and you don't have to be worried about having that lopsided <laughs> drawing that you have. Nadia, do you do you guys use the mobile technology out in the field, or you you old school too? I haven't started. I haven't started it. Okay. Um, okay. I'm in with her. Gotcha, gotcha. And 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 he gave us the date, January the fourth, for Robert. Do you know your actual official day that you started? Say yes. I mean, don't lie to me. If you don't know, <laughs> you don't know. Nadia, what would we say your first day is? My first day would have been the first day of the of class. class. Okay. All right. Do you know what day that was? We'll have to look that up. We'll have that for next time. All right. Two weeks ago. I, two weeks ago. I, you know, I'm going to write this down and make a document. Actually, you write it down because I'm bad at keeping this stuff. But Robert started January 4th. You started two weeks ago, whatever date that was. Write that down. Let us know next time. We're going to follow you. If that's all right, we're going to, we're going to check in with you two on a regular basis, see how things are going, see where you're at on your journey. I think our listeners would like to know and maybe just kind of follow along and see how you do uh, on this journey. Or do you, you know, do you make it? Maybe you... Uh, fall off the path and decide to go be a, an attorney after all, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you, you might continue to take those steps because there's not a lot of appraisers that are also attorneys. There are some. Um, Craig Bell is an attorney. He knows his stuff. Peter Christensen's an attorney uh, kind of in our industry. He knows his stuff. They're not appraisers. They're attorneys, right? Um, but uh, they, they take classes Peter told me once, he said, Brian, I took your class. It's really good. I really liked it a lot. I, I didn't know what class he was talking about. After a few moments, I realized he was talking about my class, the class I wrote. The Appraiser's Guide to CYA, a little plug in there. And, uh, and, but these guys take these classes to learn. They're defending appraisers. They're representing appraisers. So while they're not certified appraisers, they are trying to get all the knowledge that they possibly can so that they can do their job better in uh, consulting and defending appraisers. So uh, so what, what are you guys thinking? Are you uh, going to get licensed? Are you looking to be a certified residential appraiser? Or are you looking to keep on going and become a certified general? Nadia, what, what kind of, what's your plan right now? Um, I want to get up to certified general. I want to do it all. Very cool. Very cool. Why not, right? Why not? I like it. I like it. Yeah, right. you know. Uh, Robert, what, what's your thought? Are you going to just stop once you get to the lowest level license, or you you want to at least get certified residential? I mean, or have you ever have you even considered it at this point? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to be certified residential appraiser. Um, I think that there's plenty of work in that uh, field 
per se, or with that credential out there. So, um, you know, maybe once I do get that to that point, maybe I do want to go a little bit further. Um, but I think that I think that that would be good for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. What is the most interesting thing so far you've learned about real estate, Robert, in, in your classes or in your exposure as being out there with Adam, your mentor? What, what's, what's something about real estate that you didn't know about prior to entering into this arena? Um, well, I guess just the fact that it's ever changing um, and, you know, the, the market goes up and down and, you know, right now it's just doing some crazy things. And I, I, I like, I just like the fact that um, it is always changing, that, that there's always going to be a challenge or you may have to do something a little bit, you know, different. Uh, but I also like the fact that, um, you know, you can go anywhere with it, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. And, one of the things that, see, I was in Chicago when I got into this industry, and, and that was one of the things. I was married at the time and started having little babies myself and thought, you know, I want to go home and raise my family there. Owensboro is a, a great little small town, although it's not super small. We've got 100,000 folks or so. It's, it's kind of like a Mayberry, you know, and, and what a great place to raise a family. And I, I said, you know, no matter where you live, you got to have real estate agents and you got to have appraisers. This might be something that will just get me back home. And it did. And, um, and so I think it's the greatest job on the planet. Now, what about you? If, if we said, Hey, um, you've taken a couple of uh, appraisal related classes. Now, is there anything that you've learned about real estate that you didn't know before you started this path? A lot. Um, <clears throat> um, been a lot of things specifically how appraisers go through the lenders that um they don't have to be in contact with the realtors as much because there's a lot of um conversation that can be in there mm -hmm. you know or um chances of ethical dilemmas and it kind of knocks a lot of that out and i mean i think it's a great thing but i can see how it used to be differently and I can see how it was a lot more um that was definitely a downfall is what my advisor said in the past and now it's made her job easier right so that's, right that's awesome right well guys thanks so much for being here this was fun and uh if you're open to it, I think I'm going to bring you back on a regular basis and we'll just check in with Robert and Nadia on a regular basis and uh, our viewers can kind of follow your story to see where you're at. Is that something you'd be okay with doing? Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Let me check with my supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we better quit talking badly about him, right? <laughs> or, or, or were you talking about your wife, Robert? Which one were you, were you talking about, supervisor? <laughs> both, both supervisors, right? Well, guys, again, thanks for being here. We'll have you back on really, really soon. And uh, we're excited to follow you on your journey. So uh, keep a documentation of all your exciting, fun events and uh, surprises and and challenges that you have along the way so that you can continue to share those uh, with, with my listeners. Um, I've got a video coming out soon about the shuffle walk. Sounds like a dance, but it's not a dance. And the ball test, the, uh, the appraisal community used to do that. So I'm going to have that on a, a little YouTube channel uh, over at Brian, Brian Reynolds, Brian S. Reynolds, Brian S. L. Reynolds, somewhere in there. So you guys can check that out. Again, thanks very much for being here for Robert Taylor and Nadia, Nadia, say it, Nadia. Go. Nadia Workman. Nadia, God, <laughs> by the time we're done after 240 episodes, I'll be able to say your name. How's that? Workman. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be a certified, you'll be an attorney, certified general. I mean, you know, you'll be maybe retired by then. I'm not sure, but I'm going to, I'm going to try really, really hard. Uh, I'm Brian Rose, your host. You've been listening to the Appraisal Update podcast for the five folks of Appraiser E Learning. Thank you for my guests for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, have fun out there appraising. Take a mini vacation if you haven't had one in, in a while. Uh, most of all, be safe during these trying times. And until next time, happy appraising.